Hey guys, welcome back. We're starting to get some projections in now that Bernie Sanders will claim the popular vote in winning New Hampshire. I want to do a little bit of a discussion right now, just kind of a preliminary of what happened in New Hampshire. And then later on when we get the final results, I'll be making a couple of videos tomorrow going over the pledge delegates that are going to be divvied up among these individuals and update the pledge delegate tracker, as well as recapping my predictions where I went right and where I went wrong to continue to get all this coverage throughout primary season, consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. So there's a lot to talk about here with the New Hampshire primaries. I'm going to be going through the candidates, just giving my own analysis on what I feel is happening here, maybe some positives and negatives in these instances. So I want to start with coming into the night. There's kind of in that realm of around six or so candidates that have a legitimate shot at potentially doing something in the way of having success throughout this process. And those would have been Bernie Sanders, Pete Buttigieg, Amy Klobuchar, Elizabeth Warren, Joe Biden, and Michael Bloomberg, who's not planning on being a factor here in the early states. Now, out of those individuals, the ones who had really poor performances and have to start questioning whether how viable they're going to be long term throughout this process would be Joe Biden, as well as Elizabeth Warren, who both look like they're going to be finishing below double digits. You have Elizabeth Warren at 9.45 percentage points and Joe Biden at 8. Six, nine. Now, this is devastating, particularly for Elizabeth Warren, because she is the senator from the neighboring state of Massachusetts. And when you look at the entire United States, all 50 states, where are the areas where Warren would expect to do well if she's going to have enough strength to win the nomination? Well, you would definitely put New Hampshire in that column of an area where one would figure that Warren could do well in a scenario that would have her go on and capture that nomination. Not the case here. She's continuing to go in the wrong direction in what was supposed to be a pretty key state for her. She disappoints on a rather massive scale. And then Joe Biden, that electability that he's been campaigning on, it just goes completely out the window. He finishes in a very disappointing fourth place in Iowa. And the poor momentum from that, he stumbles into New Hampshire ends up getting fifth place, an utter disaster right now for the former vice president. His electability message that he's been putting out there has taken a beating. We'll see if he's able to bounce back as we head our way over into some more diverse states coming up, Nevada as well as South Carolina. That can possibly be a scenario where he resuscitates his campaign and gets things back on track, but that is a tough path for Joe Biden to forge now that He's just done so poorly in these first two contests. He's been collapsing in the national polls. It seems like his supporters are getting nervous about his potential throughout this process. They seem to be splitting him up among some of these other options. So we'll see what the process has to unfold here for Joe Biden going forward. Now, if just a week or two ago, you would have told me that Joe Biden might not win South Carolina. I would have said that you were crazy. That would be one of the things that I would expect more than anything else throughout this early process. That along with probably Bernie Sanders claiming New Hampshire. But that starts to come into question here with Biden getting fifth in New Hampshire. We'll see what he does in Nevada. But if he has another poor showing in the next result, all of a sudden, maybe South Carolina starts to become a bit more of a discussion and maybe could be a bit more competitive there on the top line. But then the other things to take out from these early New Hampshire results is the fact that Amy Klobuchar is still remaining very much in this thing, and she has occupied that centrist lane probably better than anyone in recent weeks, and that's probably allowed her to coalesce maybe a bit more so of that Hillary Clinton-type centrist, maybe a little bit older voter, has been going over to Klobuchar, at least in this instance in New Hampshire. And then also Pete Buttigieg, his entire campaign strategy coming in to 2020 has been putting in a ton of effort and resources into areas that he thought he could have success with, states like Iowa and New Hampshire right out of the gate, to kind of boost his national image and then play off of that to have success throughout the rest of this process. He has certainly had some success in doing this, finishing in second place in both Iowa, as well as New Hampshire in the popular vote. But now things start to get really difficult for Buttigieg going forward. And not just Buttigieg, also Amy Klobuchar. They've now shown that they can get a decent size of the vote in very white states, but still nationally, they're not polling all that well. And particularly, they have just not shown anything in the way of serious support among minority groups, which are going to be a very important voting block as we work our way through all 50 states. They haven't shown that they could get Hispanic support, African-American support. We'll see what they're able to do in that arena 
if they can build off of this where they had success in very white states. Again, the polling would suggest that they're not likely to have as much success going into Nevada as well as South Carolina. And maybe this glowing narrative that they're able to get here from New Hampshire goes away in those next contests. And then on the top line here, Bernie Sanders, there is a lot of overwhelmingly positive things that him and his campaign can take from these first two results moving forward. But I got to say, this is not the kind of landslide victory that the Bernie Sanders campaign would have wanted to have in New Hampshire. It's bordering Vermont. He did extremely well in the state in 2016. And although he is going to win the popular vote, at least that's what's being projected at this point in time, this isn't the resounding type of victory that he wanted. So that's the negative here, but there's still a ton of positives for the Sanders camp to bring out of this. So coming into primary season, it was Joe Biden was kind of the pseudo front runner just based on where the national polls had been. And then you kind of had Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren duking it out for second place, trying to close in on Biden in the closing months, reaching these early states. But now we're in a situation where Warren and Biden have completely fallen off. They finished third and fourth place, respectively, in Iowa. Now they're finishing fourth and fifth place, respectively, in New Hampshire. We'll see what's in the cards for their campaigns going forward, but they've taken a big hit in their possibilities at going on and winning this thing, especially in terms of where the odds have their chances at going on and winning this thing, where now you have just a completely muddled field behind Bernie Sanders, who is the front runner. He wins the popular vote in the first two states, and now he's going into some more diverse areas where his campaign has done a tremendous job building on that coalition, where in 2016... It just wasn't as diverse of a coalition behind Sanders. He did extremely well, more so in areas that were a bit whiter in nature. But with the work that his campaign has done this time around, it seems like, based on what the polling is indicating, that he's doing very well among minority voters. And that could pay dividends as we move out west to Nevada. Maybe that starts to show up in the southeast where Sanders was absolutely crushed in 2016. Maybe he's able to get some more inroads this time around, especially with Joe Biden fading back. Maybe that allows Sanders to pick up some of that support as well. But this is a really almost a best case scenario for Bernie Sanders, where all of a sudden he doesn't have to worry about Joe Biden quite as much, who was the front runner in the national polls coming into this thing. You have much lesser known individuals, Pete Buttigieg and Amy Klobuchar, taking that narrative and momentum away from what could have been tougher candidates to go against at the top in Elizabeth Warren and Joe Biden, who have more in the way of political clout and name recognition. Buttigieg and Klobuchar almost coming out of nowhere in these first two states to have more success than what the polling was indicating for them. But if you're the Sanders campaign, you'd much rather have a national campaign going head-to-head -head or in a three-way race against Buttigieg and Klobuchar as opposed to going against Warren and Biden. In my opinion, given Sanders' relative strength in the minority voting communities that might show a big difference in the results that we get in Nevada and maybe South Carolina, where Buttigieg and Klobuchar are likely to take big steps back potentially in those areas. We'll see what kind of surge they get from the positive press that's going to come out of this New Hampshire result. We'll see if that resonates with some of these minority communities and those voters. But if you're the Sanders camp, again, you'd much rather go head to head against Buttigieg and Klobuchar as opposed to Warren and Biden because their national numbers are still very low in relative respect to some of these other upper tier candidates. And that has to do with their ineffectiveness in pulling in those Hispanic and African American voters, which is going to start becoming a much bigger part of this process going forward. So that's just my two cents on what's happening here out of New Hampshire, some positives and negatives that we have about these different campaigns. But the big storylines coming out of the night is a big surprise from Amy Klobuchar doing quite a bit better than what the polling was indicating. Also, the fact that Sanders and Buttigieg, the success that they had with the white voters in Iowa seemed to carry over to the white voters here in the state of New Hampshire. And then Elizabeth Warren and Joe Biden, very disappointing showing, worse than anyone was expecting, particularly for Elizabeth Warren coming from the neighboring state of Massachusetts. She put in some resources to have success in New Hampshire, and it just hasn't played out in a positive manner for Warren. Joe Biden, he kind of threw his hat in and essentially giving up in New Hampshire on the debate where he said he wasn't expecting to do all that well. He's pretty much putting all of his chips in the middle of the table there, all of his eggs in the South Carolina basket to try to get something in the way of a positive narrative heading into Super Tuesday. We'll see if he's able to survive to that point or if his 
support based on what we're seeing in the polls continues to recede. And he's vastly been underperforming what a number of these polls have been indicating for him. So that's also not a great sign for Biden going forward. So that's all I wanted to talk about here about this New Hampshire primary. And again, when we get the final results coming out tomorrow, I'll be making an update video on exactly how things played out, updating the Pledge Delegate Tracker, as well as recapping the predictions I had made for this race. So I appreciate you guys stopping by. Consider subscribing for more, and I hope to see you back here for future videos.